Um, did anyone not get a magnet or like one of the flyers? We can probably get back to you. Yeah, I'll just leave it in the back for anyone who's Do you want to sit in the front pile of this board? Oh, you're fine. I brought some sweat to give out. Cool. All right, Joe, uh, is the stream okay? All right, cool. I believe so. All right, so thank you for people who are joining. Uh, we got a good crew here of teachers, wow. students, and uh, our high school students and college students, and WHYY staff. Uh, Woo! Oh. Woo! Um, uh, and so, uh, thank you for coming. I'm Lisa, I'm Director of School Partnerships, so I invited all of you here. Uh, I also invited uh, my new friends from NPR yeah. here, uh, Steve and Janet. So I'll let them introduce themselves. I'll pop in a little bit, but they're really going to talk to you today about their student pod podcast challenge at NPR, and also about best tips for, for yeah. doing the audio story. So I'll let them take over. Here. So, hi, I'm Steve. Um, I've been at NPR 23 years, and, you know, um, like a lot of you, my job is to tell stories with sound, and that's what we're here to talk about. A few years ago, we started a contest, first with um, young students, grades 5 through 12, and then now in college, trying to teach people how to do that, and how to, how to do what we would do, tell stories with sound. It used to be something that NPR had a, almost, or a public radio, I should say, had an almost monopoly on, you know? Um, it took a lot of equipment, and they were in my when I started NPR, fancy reel-to-reel -reel tape decks, um, but now digital equipment and long fancy microphones and uh, uh, digital recorders and audio editing equipment, you know that's all out the window now. I tell my students at the University of Maryland each fall, you can do this, you can do learn all that stuff if you want to, but everybody in this class, you could do the class with a smartphone and a laptop. And they're doing fine podcasts with that. So in other words, there's been a great kind of democratization of podcasting that's really cool. And I hear, I see it in my students. The first time I taught podcasting was 10 years ago um, at Princeton University. And they were really, really smart young people, but boy, they had no clue about this stuff. You know, was one, one kid was in a band and he taught the other ones how to do um, sound editing. Now these students, it, it, even, the under, even the younger students, they edit videos, they do uh, all kinds of things with audio and video editing and recording. They've gotten much better, so it's a different world, and I see it too. Um, I judge a couple of podcast, national podcasting awards, and so many people, it used to be NPR dominated these things, or our member stations like WHYY. That's no longer the case anymore. So it's kind of a cool Democrat. Everybody knows you can do a podcast in the basement. Of course, there's a lot of really bad podcasts that come out of people's basement and so that's kind of what we're doing that's kind of what our contests to do janet and i get how many how many podcasts Janet? like three over three thousand three thousand podcasts yeah. <laughs> we mostly janet listen to all of them and probably two thousand nine hundred of them are not great a lot of it is a is a student reading their term paper into a microphone um and that's fine but a lot of them aren't, and that's the fun of all this. So anyway, we just thought we we were here today talking about our contest, and and but maybe a little bit more broadly, how what we've learned or what what we are exploring about how to teach about podcasting and how to get young people jazzed up about telling stories with sound. So anyway, that's that's kind of our deal. Janet's got a whole <laughs> she's come armed with stuff to talk about. I know. Hi everyone, my name is Janet Lee. I work under Steve, I'm a producer on NPR's Education Desk. And yeah, we're gonna talk about the contest, but I guess, yeah, like Steve said, like maybe some of you uh, make audio for a living, but also teaching it feels really different. Or maybe you're a big fan of podcasts, but making your own is also just like a whole other experience. Um, trying to write it, trying to mix it, trying to like get sound. So we're gonna talk about all those pieces today, but yeah, before that, I'm just curious, how many students do we have here? Wow. Okay, so students, we're going to talk to you about how you can win this thing, um, and how many teachers do we have here? Okay, amazing. We'll talk about how to incorporate this in your class, and do we have any HYY staff here? Okay, and now, for this way off, you'll learn exactly what it is so you can spread the love and word wherever you go. So thank you all for coming. But 
Um, I'm going to play a little clip. So this is a news magazine piece, one like short piece that was on the radio to talk about our contest the very first year. That gives a little sampler of what kind of stories we get. Um, just so you know, since we have college students, this is from the middle and high school contest, so they're going to sound a little younger, but they're still very cute. Wait, you'll, but, you'll, do you want me to slide this over to you instead? Can we? Oh, yeah. You'll hear one of my absolute favorite <laughs> student, student podcasts in this piece. Too. I might ask you to log in your Google Drive. I think I've tested out. The sound does work. So, um, sorry. <laughs> All good. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to, in that case, just find Sorry, I'm going to Google it. Um, Always rely on Google. Pause <laughs> challenge. I love this one. We played it to middle schoolers earlier. It's so good. Sorry, give me one second. Um, how did I find it earlier? Rich Martin. Mm -hmm. That's true. Cool. There we go. Hey, there we go. Is it sound ready? It's ready. On tomorrow's show, we're going to hear one of the grand prize winners in the NPR Student Podcast Challenge. Our two champions, one from middle school, one from high school, were chosen from nearly 6,000 entries. Picking a winner from all those was hard. So today, we share some of the entries we received. In all, more than 25,000 students participated wow. in this challenge from all 50 states. We heard from cities and suburbs and rural areas, big schools, small ones. Students at Jesse Beck Elementary School in Reno, Nevada brought us a podcast about tater tots. Here's what some more people have to say about tater tots. I like tater tots because they're mushy and not so crunchy like fries. Here's someone who doesn't like tater tots at all. I like tater tots because they're greasy, mushy, lumpy, and they're really weird shaped. Get your Napoleon Dynamite reference in now. Covering all sides of the tater tot story Great. here. Sixth graders at Clearwater Fundamental Middle School in Florida also aim for journalistic balance in their submission. In today's podcast, we are going to be talking about which is a better exotic house pet, skunks or hedgehogs? I'm Audrey, pro hedgehogs. And I'm Sophia, pro skunks. Pro skunks! Uh, so, <laughs> we also got some really sound rich podcasts. Listen to this one. What you are hearing are the sounds of ice carving. My name is Oliver Ockenor. I go to school at Joy Elementary in the sixth grade, and I'm here at the 2019 World Ice Art Championships in Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow, a lot of these students also address more serious issues. Hello, my name is Hayden, and I love video games. Hayden is an eighth grader at Hudson Middle School in Ohio. But sometimes they can affect the way you think, eat, sleep, concentrate, and much more. I'm going to be getting in all of that today. Wow. Out of Montana, fifth graders at the Crow Agency Public School told us about life on the Crow Reservation and addressed misconceptions and stereotypes they believe people have about them. People think we still live in teepees and still hunt for food. And some of you shared your personal stories. Hi, I'm Stellan, and I'm transgender. This is my story. Stellan Petto is a sixth grader at the J. Graham Brown School in Louisville, Kentucky. After trying therapy and doctors, Stellan's mom asked him a simple question. Well, what would you change about yourself? She asked. Oh, Mama, that's easy. I'll change everything. I want to be a boy. Thank all of, thanks to all of you for sharing your stories and your podcasts with us. And tune in tomorrow when we will bring you the winning podcast from a middle school in the Bronx, where students took on a topic they said adults nope. didn't feel comfortable talking about. Can I just say, this was our first year we did the contest. We had no idea if we'd get 50 podcasts or 500. We got more than 5,000. We just completely had no idea. We had podcasts. I had our intern that year count them up. All 50 states, District of Columbia. We had some incarcerated students in Milwaukee. We had adult students at an adult education program in D.C. We heard this kind of diversity in the range of voices that you heard there. We had a student with autism. We had a student who was deaf. Um, we had all kinds of people. And that We really did this as an experiment. Hey, let's see what happens here. And now here we are five years later doing this. It's been a lot of, uh, it's been a lot of fun. And we also heard that first year, and we hear every year, teachers saying, hey, this is kind of fun. It's a different, it's a different way. The main thing, though, in the second year, I'll just say one more thing. And I'll, no, the second year, the pandemic happened, and we thought, oh, that's going to that's gonna 
it's going in the tank. Well, we still got 50%. We had 2,500 um, podcasts, but many teachers wrote and said, oh, this is actually a thing that kids can do on Zoom. In other words, this medium, where <laughs> Janet and I do our jobs on Zoom. And so um, teachers found out that it was a, a group, a project-based learning thing that they could actually do during the pandemic. And so it tapered off a little bit, but it stayed. And then this year it went back up to the, we had the most last year, and whatever year. Yeah, it went back We got up. the most since that very first year. So we seem to be onto something. Teachers seem to like it. And so that's, we're basically trying to now grow our college audience, which, um, which is a considerably smaller for a lot of reasons. Janet, you're going to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so. and now that we're in like year five, um, we've also gotten entry, like, hall, or we got, um, yeah, we got, like, a high school entry from, like, someone who was submitted, like, as a middle schooler, like, years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 like, coming back, and we're like, wait, and, like, I didn't do that the first year, and then, so now listening this year, I was like, wait, that name sounds familiar, and I literally scrolled back, and I was like, wow, and, like, to some students, like, really love it, and, like, grow like in podcasting and that's like something they love doing now and then some teachers also get really invested like we talk about the cicero people yeah Can yeah, you yeah. in cicero illinois um we just like kept from cicero illinois this like small town kind of like tucked like around like chicago like um we kept getting like finalist entries like year after year so we just like visited them and it so much of it was that like the teachers were just like so invested in it um and kind of like train their like students like make their own thing and like really built it in like as part of their class curriculum we also met a teacher in mississippi this year oh, yeah. um who had like made his like whole slide deck that like she he shares now with like other teachers because he adapted it during covid because his students were tired of writing essays and just like found it to be like really fulfilling for himself too to kind of build his own school's like podcast now so they all live in like one feed so i think you know it's kind of like everything with like in schools where like some folks like love it more than others like some whether it's like your your students like one student might be really into it one person not as much like if even if you love listening to podcasting if you're a student you might make it and be like this is my thing so i think it's just we try to provide as many tools as possible for you to do it and kind of like provide like an incentive for students to be like i'm gonna turn this in and see how it goes um so a little bit more about the logistics of the contest um okay i guess i have to hit for each one. <laughs> and it's good next yeah. year will be fourth to Yes. Yeah. So we have two different contests. So when I say the student podcast challenge, it used to be and it was always grades five through twelve these past five years, but next year, um, with sort of emails we've been getting from teachers asking for a fourth grade one, we're gonna expand it. So it's gonna be hey, four through twelve. Any elementary teachers here or you teacher of little kids? Do you think cool. fourth graders could do this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we didn't take, it's why we've resisted the calls early on. By the way, the thing with, with these younger kids is we've said a lot, it has to be their work. And early in the first year, some of the teachers would be like, well, I edited the piece for them. They were saying this in the thing, and we, we DQ them. So, you know, there's a very thin line, as any teacher knows, but we like them to be their original work. And we had kind of questioned, that's why we start at fifth grade. A whole bunch of teachers wrote in, so... Janet suggested that we open it up and see what happens with the fourth graders. I don't know. Can they you, do this? You get you get some kids that are like unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. Yep. I, I mean, you know, and it, it's like you don't always know where their skills are going to be, but sometimes they're just uh, unbelievable. The the tater tot kids were fifth graders, you know, and yeah. you hear their energy. That's a good. And Janet and I were talking like the the younger kids. They don't know the rules, they don't know what the rules are, so they break them all the time, and they're fun, and they have that energy. Whereas actually in high school, they're a little more self-conscious and self-aware, and they sometimes, anyway, that the journalism is better, the storytelling is better, of course, their writing is better, but we kind of love the energy that the younger kids. So anyway, we're going to try this out and see what happens. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, Thank we'll you. see. Yeah, but, so, and for the college students in the audience, so the college podcast challenge, which if you got the flyer, there's more on the table if you didn't get one, is open now um, and it closes on January 5th. So that's the first Friday of January, but I'll probably keep it open through the weekend. Um, so if that's you, um, it's open to any students pursuing an associate's or a bachelor's degree. So originally our college and grade school one were like it's the same. It was a spring timeline, but this year for the very first time, we pushed back the college one to the fall semester. So because of that, 
Um, if there's anyone here who graduated earlier this year, um, as in like the calendar year, so you graduated like June or like May of 2023, you can still participate. Um, and you don't need a professor to submit it for you. So even if you, it's like a podcast you make for fun and you have it already, or you made something for a class assignment, um, or if you have like a podcasting club and like want to submit it as a group, um, this is like a really good opportunity for you. And the huge incentive is there's $5,000 on the line if you win for college. And, and Jan it has to have been made January 23 to January 24, right? The time I actually frame. don't think you don't, we don't have, have a set time okay. when you made it. So even if you made it like two years ago and you refined it and you're really proud of it, you can still submit it now. We will, I will not ask when you made it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, oh yes, so kind of important, there are two requirements for both. One is that your maximum length has to be eight minutes, which I know is a little tight. Um, this was our original timeline for the five through 12. We are kind of reconsidering it for the college next year. You should explain, what, well, yeah. the first year we, we had the maximum length 12 minutes, and so we listened yeah. to a lot, that's a lot of listening <laughs> for us. Yeah. So there was a little bit of, but I, our HYY friends here and Janet and I can tell you, stories are always better when they're shorter. Mm -hmm. Having said that, well, talk about the college Thing yeah. yeah. Well, so I got the first like 50, like 20 entries um, like very early in the month and I realized like I had to email half the students asking them to resubmit because they were longer and you know it generally a lot of them were between like I want to say like 12 to 15 minutes like and you know that's kind of the podcast link you make and I understand because that's like the stuff you listen to is like the like daily podcasts and stuff are between like 10 to 20 minutes so we are kind of thinking about it but i would recommendation is like if you already have something you're working on that's like longer think of it kind of as a trailer like find the best bits like in, like get like introduce like one character that's like can really hold you through or like find like whatever part that stands out to you the most like put it like all in there within those yeah. um that time frame and then the second requirement is um all music must be self-made or slash like you can't use any copyright music so even if you didn't make it you can use like copyright free music that you can find online but this is just because we want to share your work with um, the greater NPR audience or like online and we just want to make sure we don't get it you you in any like legal trouble we, um, we, we cannot yeah. put you we yeah. cannot use that stuff on the radio so if we want to if we want to award a winning podcast and play it on the radio it, that has to be yes question yeah. back there there's like a lot of Royalty free music on the internet. Can we use that? Yes. yes. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we've had a lot of luck with students scoring their own pieces, whether it's their own music or they're writing background. And we have, Janice is going to talk about, there's materials online. Yeah. We've done interviews and we've done a podcast episode about how to score your piece and what the point is. A lot of the, for the especially the younger kids, just put music under the whole thing and it's, it's almost like uh, noisome. So we've done a couple episodes of one, how to score, how to put music in and what the point of it is and then how to actually compose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Does anyone make music? Yeah, I need, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, feel free to use those, yeah. I guess just like bottom line is what I, what we can't hear is like an episode on Taylor Swift and I start hearing her song, I'm gonna stop listening because yeah. we can't do anything we about have disqualified it. Hundreds, yeah. <laughs> we have disqualified yeah. hundreds of podcasts, not that they're great podcasts or they didn't serve the, the Students got an A. It was in their class. Like that's all great. It just meant we couldn't use them for our, our yeah. uh, podcast. The very first year, though, our legal people were like, "No music." And, well, what about like your question? What about no nope, no music? And then the second year, there were so many requests. People saying, "Oh, I want to put my own music in there." Or there, anyway, we they they gave us this language that says just no copyrighted music. So yeah. anyway, it's, it's a real sticking point legal wise. Yeah, and I would reiterate, same for WHIY. So, yeah. Because I'll come back when they enter. Right. For w but for the high school and the um, middle school entries, it, the formal announcement for the 2024 will be in January. Yes. And it'll be due end of March, probably April. March, April-ish, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'll send you guys those emails too, but right now the deadline you see online is for this past spring plus the January 5th for the college, yep. which yes. would be this January. Which, well, yes, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so... Oh, I edited that incorrectly. So the college one open to college students is open now through January 5th. Um, yeah, so the student podcast challenge is going to open next year. Essentially everything Lisa said. But yeah, for anything I just talked about, our like short link is npr.org slash student podcast challenge. So that'll get you to all the info you need. Um, if you are 
kind of new to podcasting, um, you still have plenty of time for the college contest, like, so please give it a shot. And Or if you're a teacher who's trying to teach it for the first time, we also have a resources page, and I'll mention this later too, but it's called Sound Advice. Um, if you Google like Get NPR it? Sound Advice, I know, yeah, Steve is very proud of this. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you Google NPR Sound Advice, Thank you. um, you'll find a page where we provide like materials for like how to get started from literally like free audio editing software you can use to like scripting tips like how to like record stuff on your phone to like teachers like teaching curriculum guidelines for like where to get started in terms of like writing and like how to incorporate it. Um, so we'll touch based on a few of these but it's really like built out online. Um, yeah, what do you need to make a podcast? Um, should we listen to this? Yeah. Sure, Is it yeah. the pillow form? So yeah. We'll play a minute or two of well, yeah. it. Yeah, we'll play a little bit, and I know some people in here have, so we'll also do this a little bit. This is kind of some of the training too. materials. Yeah. yeah. It's for little kids, so take that with a grain of salt. Hi, I'm Melissa Nagorny for the Student Podcast Challenge, and this is an NPR studio. It's a soundproof room where we record podcasts and news segments, and we interview famous people. And I'm here today to guide you through making your podcast sound better. The problem with classrooms and schools is they're filled with people. And people make noises. Sound is constantly bouncing off of things, and if you've got people talking, you're not going to be able to hear you. You want to make sure you're not drowned out by your surroundings. Can everyone be quiet? We're trying to record a podcast. NPR reporters often need to build sound booths on the go. But how? Turns out there's an awesome trick that you can use anywhere. Pillow forts? Pillow forts? Okay, let me explain. Don Gagne covers politics for NPR, and he travels all over the country making radio. He's a big deal, so you should listen to him. Notice how he positions the pillows. That's because the soft pillows muffle the sound. You want the sound to bounce off as few surfaces as possible. <coughs> so the pillow fort is basically built here, right? But what I do before I start recording is I might just make a couple of adjustments. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit into the fort, and I'll go, okay, let's, there's a little bit of metal over there, like a panel, and I just want to cover that a little bit, because it might echo. When I, when I turn this way and speak, uh, not using the benefits of the bill of fort, uh, we can hear the room in this recording. It's a little boomier. It's yeah, so a little sampler of like what kind of materials we, we have. Um, we have some stuff that's a little more like, you know, for the college folks out here that's a little more like straightforward and like written out like one by one. Or there's like this um, where you can also play it to a classroom um, or like use off of whatever tips there's on there, so. I should say, that's Alyssa Nadwarney who's on our yeah. ed team and Lauren McGacky, both of whom have spent most of the last two months in the Middle East covering the Israel-Gaza uh, conflict. So um, um, we've been able to bring our whole education team in having a lot of fun with this. But I, I say all the time, this is a video we made for Luke. Oh, so the first year, those 5,000 podcasts, we had kids recording their podcasts in the lunchroom or in their classroom, and half of them you just couldn't even hear. And so we realized, and then I would just say, every single year they've gotten way better. The number of, the percentage of students, the percentage of podcasts that are just absolutely unlistenable has gone way down. Sometimes there's stuff where they have a nice podcast, but the level is so low you can barely hear it. Or there, there's still technical stuff, but th this was a huge problem the first couple of years. Yeah. So you might be like, okay, like how do I make something that like sounds good? So we're gonna listen to five um, different podcasts that came in over the years, and we are gonna actually listen to it the style of how we do first round judging. So we're gonna listen to like roughly the first minute of all of these and maybe talk about some of the stuff we're listening to. Um, Are yeah. we supposed to decide whether it gets passed along or not? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, should we do like whether, yeah, it passes along or not? Right. And then we can also talk about what we like, we don't like. Um, and yeah, as it says right here, many of our best entries are recorded on your phone. So I know some of you have equipment also available from the station, but if you are trying to incorporate this um, with like friends or like students and you don't have all the setup, like truly like phone mics are awesome. Some of our member stations, we said a lot of students come in and record it and record in the studio, which is yeah. kind of interesting and not 
get editing or support, but just as a quiet, decent place to record it. So anyway, it's been kind of fun. Some places have been doing yeah. it. Yeah. Kind of like how in uh, after school, Steve might set you up in a quiet space, or Joe, or Brianna also sets us up in a space. But if you're getting guided by one of our engineers and told what to say, yeah. That probably wouldn't fly for this podcast. You'd yeah. have to really use the space on your own, write your own story with some oh. tips from us. Let me ask you a question. I'll tell you. Even way in the back, what is the sound of this room right now? Nobody makes a noise. What's the sound of this room? Way back there. I mean, I can hear a little bit of something. It's like a what is bit it? Static, static. Yep. What do you got? Projector. Hum. Yeah. The projector hum. Fluorescent lights make a noise. Air conditioners, these are all things that out in the field are correspondence, but also making the podcast. You have to think about and try and get that down to a minimum. We'll ask people to turn off the AC or turn the lights off. Uh, could it be a little quieter? Just trying to get people in a quiet space. So that's some of what, that's a lot of what that pillow fort um, thing is. That hotel rooms are not a great place for a correspondent to file a story from. So uh, Schools too. If you're schools in your too. School, oh my gosh. We no were in stairwells. No stairwells. Find a quiet space. Listen. If people are talking, ask them to stop, just like in the video. Yeah. I know in that pillow fort also maybe you don't have enough pillows. You might have stuffed animals. There's things that can act the same as a pillow. Uh, also blankets. They have that uh, later in the video. I have had a network correspondence from hotel rooms with a blanket over their head finding their piece at 3 o'clock in the morning. So it's kind of a weird... <laughs> fun thing of the medium is this stuff it's not like a joke like that pillow fort thing like don, I've, I've got it done all over the country doing that it's kind of weird i think some reporters here have also done the closet one oh yeah where they you have all the clothing in your closet around you and you kind of like sound. get the good sound that way so it helps isolate anything that might be coming in um yeah, we can listen to it, but uh, uh, we'll do that. And then you guys can also share some of the work that you're doing. Oh, yeah, cool. let's do yeah, yeah, at a certain awesome. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I think it's good to talk about how you guys are let's like, maybe yes, this goes on, or this doesn't go on. You can do like three. Yeah, okay. I'm probably thinking two. Okay, what's, do you want to pick one first? No, you you, you oh. know these better than I do. Okay, call. I'm going to listen to more players at the table. <laughs> <gasps> no way, really? I really like this one. Uh -oh. Montgomery Blair, okay. Those um, rascals have Montgomery Clare, right? <laughs> okay. I'll see I'm an Avocado Mafia. That's a good one. Okay, this one's called Avocado Mafia. Okay. I'm Kanye West and I love avocados. But Kanye, did you know that a lot of the avocados we get in the U.S. today are supporting the Avocado Mafia in Mexico? Don't worry, today we'll teach you all about the Avocado Mafia and its effects on the country of Mexico. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm Karma. And I'm Riley. Welcome to our podcast. Today's episode is about the Avocado Mafia and how the avocado industry affects daily life in Mexico. So why are avocados so influential? I don't know. Why are avocados so influential? Shut up, Kanye. This question is essential to understanding how people who live in Mexico experience day-to-day -day life and how former drug cartels are gaining so much power. Cool. What'd y'all think? Up or no? How many would put it, move it along to the, yeah, how many? Yeah, how many thought it sucked? There's a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. what, did, what did we do, Janet? It passed the first round, but it didn't make it to the finalist cut. Honorable mention. Yeah. That's where these go. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm going to talk thing. about a few things we think about. It's partly because, so you hear the voicing might be a little like, not as like clean, but also we, another part we really consider is like structure and like writing. And I think this was also like a middle school entry. So we were like a little more generous about like how like, yeah, well it's like put together and all. Yes. Is it ethical to impersonate Kanye West? No, but these are kids, um, <laughs> and it was funny, and we give them some slack, and like I was saying, the younger kids don't quite know the rules, and so they do all kinds of stuff like this. Sometimes there'll be some little gimmick in there that is super cute and so charming, but the rest of the thing just doesn't make any sense or whatever, and then sometimes, like, it's, I don't know, what do you think, Janet, on the edge here? Like, well, like you said, it made it to the next round. We're like, hey, nice job on that, but you're not a finalist, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> We could play like two or three more. Yeah, yeah. yeah do a couple Since more. the one's blocked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try a different one. I'll click away. There we go. Oh, okay, yeah. 
tell us how it all started. So basically, all the other moms at my daughter's school started using Facebook to talk in a group about the school events and updates. So I downloaded it to stay in the know. And I had only wanted to use this app for school updates. But one day I got a notification with the suggested groups, and one of them was called Conservative Women. So I hit the join button. I mean, I'm a woman who usually votes Republican, so I figured, why not? My friends and I are just starting high school, and our favorite way to hang out is by playing video games together over the weekend, since we have tons of homework during the week. My friends sent me TikToks with game updates and gameplay videos and stuff, but I didn't really want to download the app because I only see girls watch TikToks. But the gameplay videos are cool, I guess, so I ended up downloading the app. Two very different people with two very different stories, yet they end the same way. After joining the Facebook group for conservative women, my feed flooded with new posts. And a lot of it reflected typical conservative views. But some of the information was stuff that I had never seen reported in mainstream media, such as posts questioning the validity of the pandemic, global politics, things like that. Yeah. Does it pass, or...? How many would pass that along? Some. How many might kick it out? Maybe. I don't know. What? Why? Either side, make an argument. Yeah. I, I really liked it because it had like a, a unique way of getting across their idea of like two similar people yep. who are torn apart by two. Good point. I find that persuasive. Who else had that? Yeah. Well, when you say pass along, what do you mean? Like pass along? Like we just say we, either, we, we, we narrow up the 3,000 entries, we narrow it down about 300, which usually get an honorable mention. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we get it down to 10 finalists, and then we go to our judges, and they pick the winner. Not, uh, we, the members of our team don't pick it. So it's a screening process. We're just 90% of them go by the wayside. Okay. So what do you think? Well, okay, so I looked it up because I couldn't remember if it made the cut or not. I couldn't either. I couldn't either. <laughs> it was our finalist that you were going It was our finalist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so must get yeah. a lot better. Yeah, it's longer. It's on the longer side, but yeah, it's on the longer side. Yeah. Did those who didn't want to pass it, what was their reason? Yeah. What What didn't you like about it, sir? Yeah. Very fast. Very yeah. Very yeah, fast. Yeah. 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 Who else? Yep. Um, I just assumed it would be like a common topic, like going yeah. to extremism yeah. online. I assumed like everyone posted about this over the pandemic. Yeah. yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. I also wondered if the. <clears throat> person hosting sounded like they were also reading yeah, as the other character without much distinction. This is a big thing as a reading thing. Yeah, so it's I, still confusing. My critique was we're a minute in. I'm still not quite sure what the story is about. Yeah. But actually, I really liked what you said about them setting this framework of two two people on either side of a thing. And you, you imagine if we played it for a couple more minutes, um, they're going to uh, clearly it made it to be the finalist. So they must they must pull it together later on. Yeah, Le learning, so yeah, yeah. learning piece. It also just shows you how subjective this stuff is, and it's why we try really hard. We try to have two people listen to every one so that um, one person's really good one is another person's eh, so we try and uh, do that. But it's, it's interesting. Do we have another one, Jana, or did we get yeah. there? Yeah, should we? Maybe I'll pull up this year's winner. Okay, how about that? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Should we do middle or high school? You could see. There's a lot um, of high schoolers in here. Let's do the high school one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. This is Mississippi, right? Yeah. It's something that goes fire Yeah. Uh, no, that's not the short one. And I would say, if you do get an honorable mention as they're loading it up, uh, there is a checkbox when you submit of what your who your local station is. So remember, it's W H Y Y. Uh, yes. So and uh, Janet is going to be sending me it's time the entries. So if like cool. you know a few hundred uh, from the tri-state area submit, uh, I'm going to try to look at that. Our team's going to look at it uh, and try to figure out how we can elevate it. If you do, if you do make it, that'll be awesome, and we'll talk about what happens if you do make it. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I heard it's you. Wait, what happened? Well, I guess we won't be listening to that. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, oh, wait, hold on. I just put remote. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Uh, okay. It's computers. Okay, it's back. Great, thank you. <laughs> cool. It was a celebration yeah, for the winner from this past year. So, 
I, I feel like, yeah, with like the other stuff we like listened to, so there was like the on, one that was honorable mention, one that was a finalist. Also, I'm just gonna reiterate, like, I feel like the quality also varies every year and depending on whether it's like middle or high school. Um, but this was our grand prize winner this year, one selected out of, like we chose two winners out of roughly 3,500 entries um, and this was our high school grand prize winner. So we're gonna listen to the first minute. Mariah starts her day by going to the bathroom to check if her water pressure is working before getting ready for school. As she turns the handle, no water comes from the faucet. And so she looks under her sink for a water bottle to find out that there are none allowed. She sighs, picks up her phone, and dials the high school. Hello? The counselor is speaking. Hey, I'm calling to tell you that my water pressure has been low the entire weekend and hygiene has been hard. I ain't going to be able to come to school today. Hi. I'm... Cool. That was what, like the first 40 seconds, right? Yeah. yeah. This was a student who said she had never heard a podcast before and this was the first time she'd ever done it. Uh, we didn't know that and nor did our judges, but she does a pretty good bit of investigative reporting here about how the entire water system in Jackson, Mississippi is messed up and how it's really messing up the students' um, lives, their family lives and their home lives and everything. We had, I had sent a reporter down there to do this story kind of for NPR, but this student did a really uh, compelling story. And so we've had this mix of these like really deeply personal stories about people's identity or, or who they are versus kind of reported piece. One year, a whole class, the senior class of a high school in Stillwell, Oklahoma won. The, they did a whole investigative project about why people died at a younger age in their town or whatever. It's pretty impressive work. So we've had individual students. We've had groups of students. Um, this one comes from her. Well, Jana, talk about this teacher a little bit. Yeah. Um, so the teacher at uh, Mississippi math, School of Math, Medicine, and Science, I think is what it was called. Um, he had this like own sort of yeah curriculum that he built around this and like um, he incorporated it into his like English class for juniors. Um, so everyone in his class was kind of doing it as like a final project. It was like literary composition class. That's what it was. Um, so and the assignment he gave was do a story like tell me a story about your hometown and this is the story this year in Came Way. Um, and you know I think. Part, maybe because of the contest, but it's really not that like every student is like doing like deeply personal stories, but I think part of it is that because it's kind of that like one chance and like thing that like you will submit it anyway, I feel like our students do kind of like pour their hearts out in a way. So in a way like we've gotten, you know, the one like stories that are sometimes like really hard to tell, but they're like, you know, I'm going to make this for a contest anyway, I might as well just like put it all in there. And the, student, the teacher also mentioned like, he was also really surprised that once he started assigning this the stories he was hearing and the things that he had never known about his students, some of them he had known for years, that like this was a part of their life or like this there was this thing happening in their homes or like this is something that's been like sitting with them. Um, so yeah, I think that's also, yeah. So um, I just played this story actually oh, um, yeah. maybe last week for my students. Um, so the, the recording is really good, like all the stakeholders are there, like you hear a lot of perspectives. Um, how much can a teacher guide um, a student? Oh, um, that's a really good question because we don't want them to be written by there. I think of it as the teacher, one sec, we'll get there. I think of it as the teacher being the editor, like we do a yeah. thing and saying, okay, you might want to do this. You know, I mean, that's the whole process and that's the value of this is teaching, is teaching writing, is this iterative, editing thing, I don't think it's you with your hands on the keyboard typing for the students, but I think it, it, I think the process that we go through, you know what, I think, you're, I think you're reading too fast. Oh, I think you're starting off a little bad. I think that's expected. Okay. Like I said, it was really, the first couple of years were heartbreaking to have teachers say, well, they, didn't, they couldn't handle the audio editing software, so I did it. And we were, okay, but you know. So we try, you know, we can't police this or whatever, but we try and really say this should be original work by the students. So that's, you know, this one, that, you know, a lot of them coming from the podcasting club at some schools, so you know they're having discussions about how to gather sound and how to edit and things, and probably, you know, 
we may be getting the third or fourth draft of this piece, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's okay. My students at U Maryland, yeah, I've edited their stories and I've sent, I've kicked them back and said, no, you need to do X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. but I don't write it for them. So I think I don't know, that's a long-winded answer. But. And then, so the finalists, do you call the teachers and ask, like, you know, what was your hand in this, or do you like? No, do we're kind of trusting, and we, okay. you know, Janet had, you know, we have these kind of pretty, not only rules but guidance or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's, it's never. No, I think there was one. We do call up to just make sure we're not being punked or that the students are real or that they're still there. The teacher, you know, mm -hmm. there is some fact checking. Okay. And I think one year one came up where this, the teacher, we kind of quietly left them in the finalist category or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's kind of a judgment call. Somebody had a question way back there. Yeah, yes. go. What was actually the reason why uh, people got out of the room? Oh, for the, you talk about the piece? Yeah. People did what? Why did the people die at younger age? Well, she mentioned that in the piece or something. Or oh, why? Uh, young, died at a younger age with the water? Oh, yeah, the community I mentioned in Oklahoma. Yeah. Or Oklahoma. Yeah, it was, um, it was a town called Stillwell. It's at the end. Call it up while, uh, if you can yeah, yeah. find it. It was basically this town in Oklahoma. It was the end of the Trail of Tears. There's a huge Cherokee population there. And somehow it came up that there was some research story, it was a story in the Washington Post that said people in this town die at an early age or they're, they're like it's not a great place to live and the, the rate of early death or somewhere is higher here. And these students were like, that doesn't sound like our town. They're kind of pushing back against that. I don't that. know what's so happening. That's what it was. It wasn't some like poison in the water or something. It was just people didn't live long and they didn't have a high quality of life there. I, I think I explained it poorly. Yeah. I used this for Question back there? I thought you were talking about there's this other town in Oklahoma. No. Lead mine. Oh. Basically everyone. Different thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, this was these, it was, it was not that explicit like, oh, you work in the mines and you die or whatever. But the, there had been some news articles saying this town had like a low life expectancy or something like that. And these students were really pushing back. They talked to the mayor. They did this whole investigation of it. Question here? There was another town somewhere down in Mississippi, the same situation. People so were dying from the war because of the war. Yeah. Yeah. Say again? The right. so lead contents in the war it was flowing through the uh, yeah. town. You know, I mean, mm. I, I, I worked at NPR where we covered that Flint water story, you know, where the, 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 this entire community had been completely, you know, their health, their generations, that's going to be playing out. So these kids in Oklahoma have done a good piece. I just, I don't think I explained it. Super well. So our our, our projector is giving us a problem. <laughs> uh, that's all right. We'll pull it up later, but um, uh, I'll try to load it again. But good question. There was it. Was there another question over there too? Right next round. Did we get everybody? Sorry, I was trying to call everybody. Cool. Okay. Um. So I don't know. For since we're trying to load it again, I thought it might be cool to talk about maybe something that you guys worked oh, on, yeah. or maybe wanted to work on, or if you have questions about um who's got a good podcast or is there a problem that's come up in recording or writing or reporting your podcast that that was yeah. a challenge or that you wondered about and i want to slip one other thing if you forgot they both work at npr edu uh, ed desk so reporting on education topics but also the student podcast challenge right across the country so you know you can ask related to that but yes yeah. well your podcast necessarily needs a script no um and, you know, what we do is journalism, and they're written out, and they're scripted, but there are a lot of really good podcasts that are just people interviewing. Um, that can be scripted, or that can be totally done at random. And I, 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 they can be done without a script, an outline, or writing, or helping something, or say you're going to interview somebody, kind of knowing the arc of the conversation we call, oh, I want to begin here, but I want to get here, but it doesn't have to be completely scripted out. And then what we really, really try and do is get people to even if you've scripted it, somehow to turn the paper over and not look at the script so that you don't sound like you're reading. And another thing, what's like the best way to have like a guest on, on the uh, podcast? Like, what's like the best way to get like the fullest um, experience for you and the guest? Sure. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing that. One, do your home. I mean, there really, there's a couple of basic things of doing your homework. Rather than just sitting down with the person and saying, well, tell me about yourself or whatever. And I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but we get ones like that. But if you've done your homework, 
you know why the person's there, you've outlined to say, okay, I'm, here are my four or five questions. But then the other thing I would say is, having that list of questions doesn't mean you follow it. You know, they may, one of the answers, they may send something really, really interesting, like a bombshell, and if you're just gonna ask them the next question on your list, rather than engaging with them. And then it can be, a lot of it is like interpersonal stuff. You look at, you know, hopefully you can do the, a Zoom interview is not gonna be as good as an interview you can do, do in person. You sit down in a quiet place, you can look the person right in the eye and nod and sort of react like you're going to get a better conversation with them. There's a lot of things you can do up front. You talk to the per you know, you talk to the person, you get them comfortable and relaxed in front of the microphone. Some people are great when you we do what called pre-interviews where you talk to the person first and just see, hey, is this person should we put this person on the radio tonight? Sometimes they're fine in that pre-interview, put them on the radio you know, in front of a microphone in a studio like that, and they clam up a little bit. So you got to, and sometimes you just have to say, you know what, that wasn't a great interview. I'm going to go find somebody else who's better. Like, kind of guaranteeing the person is a good talker up front, and that's, there's no guarantee on that, but the homework you do. But really understanding what it is you're talking to them about, doing your homework, asking, you know, having a good list of questions, and then being really willing to ditch that list of questions if something happens. Hope that was helpful. I will say, yeah, it's like okay to have to jump on what Steve said. There are like definitely less scripted podcast episodes, but what you might be listening to that sounds a lot like a conversation could have been like heavily scripted. So I think the chances are, if it really sounds like a great like back and forth, let's say like an episode of the Daily, right? The it's like hours, like I want to say like five plus hours, or I think I also saw this because my roommate just started working there, goes in just even by like writing the questions and like doing back and forths even before they tape to see like what responses are gonna come out. So I think yep. this is sort of the prep work Steve is mentioning that yep. you can have an unscripted conversation or like, but I would rather say like, try to like outline something and if it goes a different way, be open to it. You don't need to st stick with your script, but at the minimum, the like prep work and research will like, make is is like what will make your podcast I, I actually have a really good example recently i ran across a podcast uh, a radio show and a podcast out of boston university and it was three students who were doing a podcast about taylor swift and how i got onto this i have no idea but it was completely unscripted and they were just like hey let's go in the studio and talk about our favorite taylor swift song or whatever but it was so full of them like making inside jokes and giggling and laughing and everything, which I bet was super funny to them at the time. But coming in your ears, it's almost kind of like just noise. And then five or six minutes in, they actually had some really smart stuff to say about music and lyrics and their fandom of Taylor Swift or whatever. But I was listening to that, I was like, oh man, I would have cut that first five minutes off and maybe a little bit of scripting and a little bit of, sometimes that's another way you can do it, is script out the top minute or so. Hey, welcome back. Today it's the X podcast and we're talking about why today. And here's what you're going to hear today. And then you can kind of slide into a little more unscripted way. So there's a lot of different ways of coming at that. I think for the purpose of our contest, we always say like start strong because we just did the demo of like, how we're gonna get into listening to these. And even with like the three, four we listened to, it was pretty clear by like the 40 seconds or like one minute, whether you want to keep going or not. And to think you have like hundreds of these, like you can like, you're gonna start determining like very quickly whether you're gonna keep going or not. Um, so yeah, maybe like if you were making like an hour long podcast, the first minute can be like a build up, but with how much time you have for this, I think it's just like always a best bet like Steve Seth, like, get right into it um, and like start strong. Put the good stuff in front. Yes, yeah. Because if not, like it might not pass the bar depending on who's listening to it. And like I would love to like get to hear the whole thing once it does, so. Other, other questions? Yeah. Oh yeah, hey. Um, I actually have a question, it's more of a personal one um, for you guys. When it comes to listening to podcasts, would you rather have a podcast um, that would cover two topics with bias or without, or how would you feel that bias against a certain subject would affect the quality? Do you have an example? Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, let's say someone is doing a podcast on religion, um, mm -hmm. one religion versus another, and let's say they're a part of the first one, and they're doing a podcast comparing the two, and there's like hinted bias, but it's like on a radio show, how would you feel? Yep that effect. Like, I totally understand. It's a great question, by the way. And here's what I would say. Yeah, and you actually touched on it in your answer. 
There's a difference between what we do as journalists on a radio show that millions of people listening to. The great thing about podcasts is you can do a podcast for 10 people, or podcast is kind of a niche thing, or it can be both. But in other words, if you're really into a certain uh, religious faith, and you really believe this is the thing, and your audience, the, part of this involves thinking who your audience is. And if you want to do your podcast about that for those people, then being super targeted, or you're going to say opinions in there. What we do at NPR is journalism, which is in that realm of saying, oh, well, we're going to tell this side of the story, we're going to tell that side of the story. That's a, that's a different discussion. And so there are podcasts that are journalism, and kind of following journalism rules. There are poly Again, to use my Taylor Swift example, did they need to bring in somebody who hates Taylor Swift or thinks they don't like Taylor Swift? Like, that's not the point there. Their audience is not for the Taylor Swift haters out there. So that's like a kind of a lame example of what you're talking um, about there. Politics, the same thing. You either have to decide, we're going to talk about politics and try and present some of the facts and some of the debates that are going on right now, or we're going to tell you why we like Joe Biden and why Joe Biden's the best guy in the whole wide world and everything. Okay, you can do that, but that's a different audience and it's a different point of view. So I think a lot of that is deciding what it is that you want to say and then really think about what audience you're going to try and reach. I hope that was helpful. It was, thank you. Cool. And I think, I don't know, if you have like a perspective, right? Like I'm going to change the wording from bias to perspective. Like I think leaning into it and like doing, like adding like reporting and like talking different, like I think it adds like a way into the story. Um, I don't know, I think maybe like a slightly goes away from like your example, but like for instance, the Mississippi piece, if you keep listening, um, the student later talks to like someone who works in like the school district and like a school staff and kind of like in a way like challenges the system, but like, you know, it's like honestly like based, rooted in like her experience living there like as a student and like the, she just like wants like know more because like there's these like more than inconveniences she's experiencing and like you know that's like a way her way into the story um so i feel like if you are bringing like some sort of like lens to it like and if clearly like you are like aware of that then like being aware of it but also seeing like where it takes you and like and your approach to that is i think okay yeah. what else can we talk about we can yak about this stuff there's, all day long. I wanted to pose that there's a lot of students here that are in our narrative filmmaking, even oh, though they're cool. ask, a lot of them are asking some really good questions um, that are oh. falls under documentaries or news. But have you come across some of the podcast challenge pieces where like students are kind of, kind of like a, it's it's not nonfiction and I, or Definitely. you know like have they gone a little more fantastical? Or we've tell we've had quite a few podcasts that are fiction. Um, <laughs> dealing with literature, if you, um, it's they don't work great, and we're we're open to listening. If there's a really good one, we'll we'll say God. We that's had a great. finalist great. this year. Did we have oh, one? Where Steve was like, wait, this is fiction. Do you remember Amelia's? Yeah, yeah, where she gets tall. There was a middle school piece about her getting taller in the middle. Oh yeah, and I, I remember it was just like so, like it was just like, yeah, and then she was like, this is fiction, right? I was like, I think so. She's getting taller. And so yeah. we had a discussion about it. It was funny. It was good. Uh, we liked it. And again, we're trying to emphasize that while we're journalists at NPR, we don't expect all these kids all around the country to, uh, or students, like, it can be. It, it's a really matter of saying what it is up top so I know what I'm listening to. I got about halfway in that piece. I was like, wait, I think this is a made-up story. Yeah, it was yeah. well done. We, we yeah. have a podcast here, made-up story. Come, remind me, Ele Eleanor Amplified, which is for young people. Oh, okay. yeah. And she's like a journalist, and it's, it is made up, and like people read it, and it's a book. So it's fun. It's fantastical. Yeah. She's like a journalist. You're not sure how old she is. So th those kinds of podcasts do exist, so they're good to do. It's a little, so, it's but, a, it's a little like the fake Kanye West. <laughs> These are students, and they're exploring and learning, and it was funny, and so we might pass it along, but it doesn't make it, you know, it's yeah. just our, our definition of not journalism. Yeah. yeah. Could a fiction podcast win the podcast challenge? We, um, yes. If the judges picked it, and it was really good, we, we've said many years the podcast I like the best has not been the one the judges picked. In a couple years, I've been mildly not happy about that, but we basically, our judges are, we pick people from the podcasting NPR W-H-Y-Y, -Y, wherever we have our judges, and we get them on, they listen to the pieces, and they almost always don't pick the one. This year, actually, I 
I think we were in pretty good shape. I like the yeah. Mississippi one was good. Yeah. So, one of the judges was uh, a freshman producer for the high school one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. Have, I, I would say yeah. this. We have not had a fictional one that, that was a contender yet. Mm. And one made a finalist, but I was still a little wigged out. Yeah, and, and that doesn't mean WHIY wouldn't listen to it either. Yep. Like, submit it. I think it's good if a student wants to go that way. Yep. Uh, just know that and then uh, we, it's not we, generally what they're selecting. Here. We keep saying teachers are doing this all over the country, and our contest is great, but if, if the English teacher wants to have them do a fictional podcast, that's great with us, and the students get an A, and maybe, you know, in other words, we're not trying to say our contest is the be all and end all of this. It's just these are the parameters we we work in. And I love their videos. You guys yeah. watch them. They're really good. You had good. a question here? Yeah. I I get how to how a podcast can tell a story. Yep. But are there any podcasts about like math? <laughs> so oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that. We have had zero podcasts <laughs> about math, and we thought this year we offered a special prize. There was all this attention after the pandemic to young people and mental health, yeah. and so we offered a special. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna put out a special prize for student podcasts about mental health. It was my, they weren't great, um, and we weren't super pleased about it. But I've wondered should we just offer a special prize and try and get math teachers involved because we haven't had great ones. A lot of them about history. Yeah. Uh, some kids will take their term paper on Hadrian's Wall or something or some Roman battle. And we've had some really, really good ones. The bar is higher because, again, it's, it doesn't have that personal feeling or that journalistic, oh, I'm uncovering something. Right. Some of them are quite good. So a couple of them have made finalists for their storytelling, their audio production, their research. They're great. It's a, it's a, tougher, it's a tougher thing to the grand prize, again, as if that's the whole goal here. But no, we've had lots of history ones. That's the best example I can think of. Okay. Uh, also, criticism. Yeah. People talking about their favorite films or why they love Jane Austen or whatever. We've had a lot of those too. And and that's C-SPAN has a video contest where they you can enter it every year. But it's all about like American government or something like that. And we set out, when we started this, we were like, we don't want to just limit this to social studies and do stories about the elections or whatever. We want the drama teacher, the math teacher, the please. Tater tots. We've had great ones. Yeah, yeah. tater tots. We've had great, we've got a lot of really good science podcasts. So if we can crack the nut with math teachers, that's our next That's our next channel. Are, yeah, are you a math teacher? I'm just curious. No, but no, I work good. in a school and I have a teacher who wants to do a podcast with us. Yes, oh, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a math teacher and I'm like, I don't know how I would do that. Yeah. But I'm, it's got to be some, well, we'll find that math teacher out there who can crack that nut. Yeah. yeah. You had a question there. So uh, in the in the grades five through twelve, we're ranging two three thousand. I would say last yes. year we got more than three thousand, and that yeah. was up. The very first year was five thousand five hundred. The pandemic cut that in half, and then it's gone back up again. We got three thousand five five hundred out there. In college, many fewer. I would say college students out there, we get a few hundred college students, which means there's a way higher percentage of winning. The first year, we only got a couple hundred, and we realized that college students are super busy. They have final exam. Like, really, they're going to make a podcast in their spare time. So we put a $5,000 scholarship on it, and the finalists, I think, get $500. Yes. So, so there's a really little cash chance. involved and in trying to make more of an incentive. We've also tried to change the timing of the contest so that if you're in a podcasting class and you turn in your final project, the contest is still open as it is right now, so you can enter. So we're trying to... We're trying to get more college students to make it easier for them to participate. Um, Did you have a follow-up? Yeah. Yeah. Also, this is a, another unrelated question, but how many podcasts do you get about music? Janet? Uh, Janet's an expert. A lot? We get a lot. I, I will say TV and movies more than music hmm. uh, because I think it's because like we put like the teachers read the rules for the grade school ones and it's just like I feel like really hard to make a music podcast without hearing the music, which we can't because of copyright. Um, but yeah, I would say like, uh, at most like 200 out of 3000 at most, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got like under a hundred. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as far as creativity, so <laughs> I will, I, well, I was just sitting here, I was just kind of thinking of like an intro, like uh, yeah. my uh, podcast and it was just like, 
It's a little silly, but it's just like, is creativity like a big part of podcasts as well? Big time. And one person's silly is another person's straight. You know, the tater tots thing made us laugh, and I know I use that one. <laughs> That's an extreme end. But the kids are really funny, and they came up with something fun. One of the things we say, everyone needs an editor. And so the best thing you can do is write your funny, silly thing. And if you, pl if you play it for all your classmates or your friends and they laugh and they're like, man, that's great. Or if people are kind of like, what? You know, like really getting feedback and soliciting it is really, really helpful. And it's, it's really hard to tell. The hardest thing to do in writing is to write funny. So mm -hmm. like some people can do it and some people can't. So I, I'd leave it to you. But why not swing for the fences and then pull it back rather than be like, oh, I don't think I'm going to try that. We get a lot of podcasts that are like, the Detroit Tigers by Steve Drummond. I really like the Detroit Tiger. You know, like it's just clearly a book report that somebody's reading. Yeah. Also, is there an um, incentive to do the challenge? So yeah, what, what do the middle school and high schools do? Yeah, that? so if you win, um, we, like, the and first of all, you it'll be published all across like NPR, so like on our radio shows, like All Things Considered or Morning Edition, all across the country as well as like our podcasts. So this year's winner, I think we also featured on like Up First and like our science podcast Shortwave. Um, so a lot of opportunity to share your story. And then there's the other like more like material stuff where you get a nice little trophy um, as well as a certificate. So, and then- and You can yeah. come to your local station and us would go to your school. Yes, and, yes, yeah. yeah. So today. our team will come to you. So. That's the other part of this with the Mississippi winner. So yeah, our team like went to go visit the student and the teacher and kind of like celebrate you with you and your local station. Um, we, so yeah, I would say, Janet, we've yeah. been surprised how many times just being an honorable mention yeah. in a town or a city in the United States, we send it out. It becomes a story in the local paper or mm -hmm. on local TV or in the radio. So there's kind of a little bit of attention to the people who have won the contest. Our first year's middle school winners were on the Today Show the week later. So that was kind of like... You know, a big deal. So we say, we kind of say, you know, Morning Edition, All Things Considered, are the most popular news radio shows in the country. So a few million people are going to hear your podcast. That's kind of cool if you choose to, like, think about it that way. And then, you know, we get to send you some, we send you a nice I don't know, plaque or whatever. Yeah, little trophies. Yep. And I would also emphasize that if you aren't in our internship program, this is a really good thing to make to apply for it or do in your after school program, like how Steve and we'll have a new session. Um, so helping and submitting for it if you're doing it. Um, so, and you can apply for the summer internship program. So. The, student who, the student who won the first year of the college contest before we put money on it, uh, oh, we, yeah. we hired her as our intern at NPR and now she works at NPR now. Although she's always a little bummed because she missed out on that 5,000 bucks, <laughs> which we yeah. added in year two. Yeah, question. Uh, the other thing to remember is that you can um, put this kind of work on your college application. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I will say, if you yeah. say, I was a finalist in NPR Student Podcast Challenge, yeah. I would say that would kind of carry some weight in your college Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Sir. What, happened, can you, what is the, like, impactful if you don't make it to the finalist? Like, you're just like an will mention. So, well, I, again, he, again okay. I'm asking for the content this year. So we're telling you about it. You can tell your friends about it, uh, whoever. Um, our coverage area, if your instructor hasn't told you, is Philadelphia, it's five surrounding counties, South Jersey, and Delaware. So I'm going to be asking them for all of those submissions from that area that check the box that says WHIY, and uh, I want to curate that work, and maybe some students are going to help me. But I, I would definitely submit, um, and WHYY will make some kind of big thing about it with uh, NPR, but if you don't make it to the finals, it's okay. There's a lot of students putting their work out there. We hear from the member station in Chicago. They'd be like, can you send us all the ones from Chicago so we can do something with them too? So yeah. and whether sometimes the school has an assembly, I don't know. There's been all kinds of different ways. Hopefully there's that inner satisfaction of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, is, maybe we'll leave one more question and then yeah. we'll, if you guys want to come up, we can talk. Um, uh, there's also, Steve bought some extra food too, um, for folks, so, uh, It's our intern's last day, so you get to party. Oh! Oh, oh yay! Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> they're, they're working, they're, 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 they're oh, oh, oh. conducting projects, they're not in here. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you can come say hi to them. They're, they're on deadline, in other yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, one other last question, or, uh, yeah, yeah, right there. You make uh, multiple submissions, or are you yes. limited? Yes. Yep. As many as you want. 
I will listen to them all. Send them. Yeah, and then the co the college one though, like you split it if you made it with multiple people, right? You split the prize. Yeah, we it hasn't come up yet, but it okay. will. Okay. Okay. So if you did it with somebody else in college, so uh, if you, I think Gabe, if you're there's students from Spoken Youth, they should talk to them, or if any teachers want to. But I think it's okay to like break for uh, break for uh, any. Uh, to go, but any final I thoughts? would just say you can find me and Janet on the internet or on social media or whatever. If you have specific questions, we're happy to answer them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks much. So much. And we're up here. Thank you. So. Thank you. Yeah.